Welcome to Synergy, the interactive toolbox providing resources for building a better life. I am Zenashe, your conduit and your coach to that better life. A coach just pulls out hidden potential within a subject. It's already there. A conduit provides a connection, and I am going to connect you to tools, resources for building a better life. And today our tool is an interview, and I have two young ladies that have come to us from San Antonio. They have their own podcast. They have their own message for empowering women, especially women that have gone through domestic violence. And I have Nisi Perkins with me and Fire. Yes, with three eyes. Yes. With three eyes. So our topic today is alignment and awareness as a key to becoming unstoppable. Because we want to be unstoppable. We, we want to be able to move past any setbacks, right. any detours, mm -hmm. any disappointments, COVID, mm, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. job loss, mm -hmm. breakups, right. just any kind of thing that life wants to throw at us. And we want to be able to overcome that. But it does take many tools. Right. But today, we're going to really be focusing on alignment and awareness, and I'm going to be getting their take on that. And we're going to be talking about our life journeys. We're going to be talking about our missions. Mm -hmm. So I want you to, if you don't have your friends on right now, tell them to join because this can only help everybody. Right, yes. Share it. You know, join us so that we can all build, we can all grow. And welcome to Zenergy. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I think alignment means. Uh, to me, alignment, I think about a car. When you're driving and it's not aligned, if you take your hands off the wheel for even a second, it's right. going to move. Mm -hmm. It's going to move off course. Mm -hmm. And if you don't correct the course, you could crash. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So alignment is, is about staying on course. It's about everything lining up in your life to get you to where you want to be. Right. And you being in tune mm -hmm. yes. with that inner guidance, yes. that inner direction. I remember when I was in high school and middle school, I used to play volleyball and I had a coach. Coach Pellerin, Merva Pellerin. I'll never forget her. <laughs> she was so mean and she was so good because mm -hmm. she taught me life lessons. And she would say to us when we got ready to, to serve the ball, mm -hmm. she said, look where you want the ball to go. To go. Mm -hmm. And right. follow through, mm -hmm. you know, follow through with your hand action only in a direction. Don't, if you change your eye, it's going to go wherever your eyes right. go. Right. So wherever your attention goes... That's where your energy flows. Right. Okay. So we have to actually keep our attention. Sometimes we get sidetracked. We start thinking about the problems rather than the goal. Mm -hmm. We start thinking about the, the, the setbacks rather than what tools and resources we have. Right. And we get off course because mm -hmm. we get mired down and all of that. So I want to come to each of you. What, what does alignment mean to you? Well, alignment means to me is, um, first of all, like you said, a car. A car, you have to have maintenance on your car. You have to do routine maintenance on your car. So when you're driving down the highway and say you hit a pothole, we have potholes in life. We hit that pothole, it knocks off our alignment. So we're driving and we take our hands off the wheel and there we go, we're veering off to you know the left or the right, but on the the, the median, there's that bumpy part, and it's just like boom, 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 boom. So I feel like that's that part in life where we're just on that veer, like mm, 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 boom, boom, boom. But if we get that maintenance, that self-care, that self-love, we get back on track. And we kind of dodge those potholes now because we now know our worth. I like that. And, and I, it reminds me of this poem that I heard. It might have been a poem. It might have been just a little short story. It was talking about this man walking down the road. And the first time he walked down the road, he fell it's into the pothole. We it's, talked it's, it's about that. It's called yes. five, um, My Life in Five Chapters. My right. Life in Five mm -hmm. Chapters. Yes. 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 Can you tell us the story? Or <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's a man. Mm -hmm. okay. Chapter one. I walk down the road. I see a pothole. I fall in. Mm -hmm. Chapter two, I walk down the road, I see that same pothole, 
I pause, but I still fall in. Mm. Chapter three, I walk down the road. I see the pothole. I go around. Mm -hmm. I realize it's a habit. Mm. Chapter four, I walk down that same road. I see that pothole. Mm. I see those habits. I name them. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I walk around. Mm -hmm. Chapter five. I walk down a different road. That is so good. Mm -hmm. That is so good. I'm, yeah. And you know, just for you people out there, we don't have any notes in front of us. <laughs> we did not plan that. That's what is called alignment. Right. Because sometimes when you have like energy, you can feed off each other. You can right. meet somebody that you've never even met before, right. that you don't even know, and you can synergize with them. You can build with them. You can grow with them. You can feed off each other like we just did. So, and then you also have to know when to be quiet. Hmm. And listen. <laughs> listen, yes. Because I could have told that story, but I I knew since they said they had just talked about this, mm -hmm. it was time for me to listen. Mm -hmm. Cause I wouldn't have told the story the way she told the story. And the way she told the story had a deeper lesson mm -hmm. than the way I would have told the story. Because I wouldn't have brought out the habits right. and naming the habits. And that's a powerful thing, because when you can name something then you can deal with it. Yes. Right. It's so much deeper. Yes. You can yes. sit and let it marinate on what those habits were. Right. I know alignment is, is such a beautiful thing, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And for me, alignment is when you can be still long enough mm -hmm. to recognize what keeps you at peace, mm -hmm. what keeps the car in alignment, what prevents it from veering. Right. Because I may want to be at the moment where I take my hands off and I want it to stay in that center lane. Mm -hmm. Peace, meditation, we are all energy. And when you learn to feel, mm, that don't feel right. And recognize it. Right. Listen to it, like you said. Mm -hmm. Listen, Listen to, to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Don't second guess it. Right. The second guess it is that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to do that. Yeah. The only way you're going to stay aligned is you have to take quiet time to listen to what aligns you. Mm -hmm. Because we are each individual's. And her alignment and her alignment, even though we are like-minded, mm -hmm. may just be a tad bit different because I'm a different car than you are. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing. We could be on different roads, but going in the same direction. Right. So I just need to know what aligns me. So that quiet time will do that, and I will give my energy to the wrong thing that keeps veering me off keeping me having to go back to that maintenance man. Right. Spending <laughs> money on that alignment because it's when you're not my tires. Right. Right, right, right. You know, I, I paired alignment and awareness because they go together. And like you were saying, you have to take time. I was just um, reading a book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And in the book he said that if you look at successful people, they take time to think. Mm -hmm. They take time to sit with themselves, sometimes even just an hour a mm -hmm. day, which seems like a very long time, right. just to think. Mm -hmm. Because when you sit and think, you're actually doing work. Yes. You're actually, everything that we see, if you look at this table, you look at all the merch on the table, you look at this glass, mm -hmm. the microphone, everything that is, came from a thought. 
Yes. And a thought is unseen, but it's it's the genesis of everything. Right. So to be aware, we have to actually get quiet, like you said, mm-hmm. and listen. Listen to that still small voice inside yes. of ourselves. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And yes. like you're talking about walking down that road, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When you're oblivious and you're unaware, you're in your phone, you're right. in your head, but you're not right. thinking positive things, you're, mm-hmm. you're worrying and stressed, then you're just walking oblivious and then you end up falling in the pothole because right. you're not paying attention. attention. Mm-hmm. You're not aware. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can miss little signs that yes. people... Are given off. You can All miss right. little signals that your ancestors might be telling <laughs> those you. Red yeah. flags. Your conscious, <laughs> those red flags. Yes. But if you quiet yourself, mm-hmm. you know, my, my mother used to say, don't make decisions in a rush. Sleep on it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sleep on it. Because in your dreams, you can get awareness. Mm-hmm. When you wake up in the morning, you might have some clarity about something because your subconscious got to mm-hmm. work on it all right. night. And it right. brings you a deeper awareness that can help you align with mm-hmm. whatever you were trying to do. Right. You know, so to me, awareness, you can't have alignment without awareness. You right. have to be mm-hmm. aware of yourself, yes, mm-hmm. your surroundings. Right. Yes. You have to be aware of all the tools that you have. Like you were saying, what is going to keep me on this path that and, and path gratitude? Mm-hmm. That's you were bringing thing. that up before. Yeah, that's it. Gratitude. Yes. yes. Sometimes we need to just be grateful. Be grateful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we have what we have. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and it's there for us to support us. You know, so I look back at my life and some of the biggest mistakes I made were because I wasn't aligned mm-hmm. and I wasn't mm-hmm. aware. Yes. And if I had taken time to know myself better. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Taking time to think a little more. Mm-hmm. I would have. And, and trusted myself, like you said. Because sometimes we know, but we say, mm-hmm. I'm just being I'm just being too picky. <laughs> right. I'm just, yes. right. I'm just being, no, yes. it's, it's no, just we my need imagination. To listen to it. No. Just no, listen. no, we talk listen. ourselves out of uh-huh. the oh, awareness. Of right. We right. talk ourselves out right. of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys want to share about that? Do you have any... I. Listening is the most um, thing that I have learned with this 2020 COVID. Um, Just sit still and listen to God. God is trying to tell you something. Um, In 2019, I was going through a whole lot of things, but I was running. I was moving. I was ducking and dodging. But 2020 came and was like, nope, you're going to sit here and you're going to listen. And that's exactly what I've been doing, and it's the most amazing thing ever. And that gratitude, I am grateful for what I've gone through, what I've been through, what I'm coming through, and I really needed this this sit still moment, and I'm so grateful for it. I hear you. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Sometimes life has a way of making you slow down, whether it it's does. COVID, whether Anything. it's kids, whether it's a job. I mean, it could be Anything. a lot of different yes. things. Yes, yes. It Definitely. just come to you when you just have to slow down a <laughs> little bit. Just sit still and what, listen. What I realized that life has not taught us to be still. Mm. It's constantly go, mm-hmm. go, go, go. We we'll, in the mornings we walk, and like Nishi will say, "Oh, and I want to do this, and oh, I want to do this, and oh, I want to do this," and I'm 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 listening. <laughs> I mean, no, because it's important to yes. listen. Because what I want her to know what she's saying is valuable. If it's valuable for this moment or another time, but it's valuable. That's one thing we don't do. We don't listen and we don't validate others. Mm-hmm. And then I pray before I say anything. That she does. <laughs> and I tell you, be it a few days, you let the most high do it. He'll come back around and she'll say, you know, <laughs> I just think we should just do that, 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 that. Just confirmed it right there on the spot. And it's, it's an amazing thing and right there. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful. But We've always taught, I need 12 jobs. I need to keep up with the Joneses. I got to do this. I got to do that. 
But if you just be still, mm -hmm. what does it say? Be still and know that I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. Right. You will find out who you are in those quiet moments. Oh, man. Yes. And you will learn to let go yeah. that, of those negative vampires mm -hmm. that tend to suck you dry. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I sit quietly, one of the things that I encourage everybody to do is journal. I don't do it a lot, but it's something about getting your words down on paper that... For me, I download my brain, mm -hmm. and I can look at it. And pretty much every year, I write down a list of what I know is true. Okay. What do I know is true? Because sometimes when we're little, we're told a lot of things. Mm, yes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And we believe those things that we're told because... Our parents, our grandparents, mm -hmm. our teachers, our neighbors, they told us. And they might have been very well-meaning. Yes. Right. Imprint on you. Mm -hmm. But some of the things we were told mm -hmm. are not helpful. Yes, no. exactly. No, they made exactly. it helpful for them. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're not helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and some things we weren't even told, we were just shown. And we, we adapted it. I remember there was a story that I heard about this woman who would make pot roast and she would cut the ends off the pot roast and put it in the pot and put it in the oven and she would throw those ends away. And after a while, her husband's like, why do you do that? You're wasting the meat. She's like, my mother did it that way. That's how she But she it. never explained why she did it. And then she asked her mother, mom, why do you cut the ends off the pot roast before you put it in the pot? She goes, well, my grandmother did it that way. <laughs> and then they finally called up the grandmother. She goes, I only had one pot and it wouldn't oh, fit, fit the pot roast. <gasps> So they had been doing it for three generations, throwing away all this meat, and nobody had thought to ask why. But they had aligned themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with this pattern because they saw it. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, some of the things we see growing up, you might see dysfunctional relationships. Mm -hmm. You might not even know it's dysfunctional. Right. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little piece, and it's from my life. I wrote everything pretty much I write is from my life. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. But this is one that I'm, I'm, I'm going to need a little audience participation with. Okay. All right. So this piece is about men and women, and it uses a metaphor. All right. The metaphor for men is water. Now, why would I say, you know, water for men? You know, what do we call a really sexy man? We call him a, a tall, tall drink, drink of water. water. Exactly. A tall glass. A tall <laughs> glass of water. So right. when I do this, like a wave, mm -hmm. I want you guys to say that word. So we're going to practice. Water. water. All right. And in this poem, there's also another metaphor for women, and it's a tree. So when I do this, I want you guys to say. Women. Tree. 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 Okay. okay. When, I, when, I, when I do this tree, I want mm -hmm. you to say. Yeah, I, I can't okay. get it. You're going to say tree. 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 Got it. All right. So this little metaphor poem, it kind of shows my life, all right? Um, and it shows how I got aligned with the wrong things. I saw my world the wrong way, and it damaged me. But I was able to change. So once again, this is water, water, and this is tree. Yes. Blue, water, water. green, tree. tree. She carries him like a mother carries her child, but he's her husband. Trust him like the sand that slips through her fingers at the beach, but loves him like an oak loves water. water. Born on the Mississippi, she's known water. 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 As deep and dark as Mississippi mud or as clear as Bahama breezes. Water. As cold as a hailstorm and as hard as a steel door. Water. That closed around like death as she waits to exhale. He is her. Water. She is his. Tree. 
He runs, plays, visiting the beaches. She stands, toweringly waiting. He rages, rips houses apart, but just rolls around her roots, snagging only clumps of clay. He gurgles bubbled melodies to her whistle in the wind. Moody like the moon, his tide waxes and wanes. Waxes and wanes, she stands. Rings centuries around her stature, holds the wealth of a million generations of mother lover sons in her outstretched arms. Her leaves fall into his ripples, a million tears of change. Blue, water, water green, tree. tree. So, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, that gave me chills. Mm. Thank you. So what, what could you tell about my first marriage from that poem? How would you describe my husband? Controlling. Con yeah, controlling. Mm. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe our interaction? It was kind of like if he was controlling, you were kind of just... Mm. No, you know, kind of step back a little. Kind of, I don't want to say intimidating, or he was intimidating, but you were kind of, kind of like a shutdown kind of thing. That's how I would see it. Yeah, I mean, so I wrote that poem about dysfunction mm -hmm. and how sometimes what's feeding you mm -hmm. a tree needs water yes okay but, but sometimes the water is drowning the tree that's it and sometimes <laughs> I, you have to have some good friends to come and yeah take you take away. you away you know a tree can be transplanted oh, yes, a tree can. can be moved yes, it, can. it doesn't have to stay rooted and grounded into something that's terribly uh Damaging it, destroying it, you know. So, and, and water, <laughs> water can drown you. Water, mm -hmm. water can be beautiful. Yes. Water can, can be cleansing. You. Right. But it can kill you too. Yes. Drowning. So, you know, relationships have the potential to be both harmful and helpful. Mm -hmm. And you got to know which one you're in. Yes. And you have to, I know in my, in that relationship, I lost myself. Mm -hmm. I lost myself. Oh, yeah. I, lost, I think we all did. Yeah, we all yeah, did. We've yeah. all lost ourselves. Yes. You know, and I had to, when I left that, that marriage, it took me two years to become realigned to myself. You know what? That was just confirmation. It took me two years, too. This would be my second year. So I know that you have um, a, a, a group of... Love doesn't hurt, or you. Mm -hmm. I want to. Love shouldn't hurt. Love shouldn't hurt. Yes, love shouldn't tell shouldn't us hurt. about that. So, love shouldn't hurt um, will be a nonprofit organization where I would like to gear towards women and men. We don't want to exclude the men because there are uh, men who are in domestic violence situations. Kind of um, helping them remove themselves from that situation. I was helped through resources of you know two months of, you know, rent or, or paying bills because I felt like it was hard for me to get out of that situation because I was financially stable. Mm. So sometimes you feel like you have to stay in that relationship because you have children with that abuser or you're financially stable. I didn't have children with my abuser, but I was financially stable. I didn't have to want for anything. So um, this organization, um, I would like for it to help men and women that are in that situation to know that there are resources out there that you don't have to stay in that situation because it's it's hindering more mentally physically to stay oh, and yeah. I know it's hard to get out of that situation but you just have to move your feet like my mom says you'll know when you're tired you'll mm. absolutely know when you're tired yeah, you, for me, it took me three times to stay gone, you know. It took me three times. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, people say, why don't you leave? Most women do. They, they leave, and he comes after them. And yes. they leave, and he comes after, after them. them. Keep and going. they leave, and, and he, he comes, comes after. after them. Yes. And, and it has to come to a point. I had to get a restraining order on mine. 
you know, so <laughs> it comes to a point where you have mm-hmm. to get resources beyond yes. yourself because I don't know mm-hmm. of any woman that made it out without help. I don't know. Me either. You know, because mm-hmm. people think it's so easy to leave. It's not, it's not mm-hmm. easy to leave. Mine was it's after 39 police reports, protective mm-hmm. order until somebody, you know, I, me and my dad just had to sit down there. and We were like, we're not moving until y'all do something. Yeah, it's, it's, whew. it is, I didn't have 39 police reports. I had several police reports mm-hmm. um, and the protective order. Yes. And uh, so it, it was, it was a, it was definitely a journey. And then there's, again, like, like I said, I lost myself because what I had become, going back to that, what you taught when you were young. Right. Mm-hmm. I was taught. You get married, you made your bed, you lie in it. Mm-hmm. You stay there. Yes. And I was also taught if he, if you don't think he's going to kill you, you know what I'm saying, if it's just a little bit of violence, I mean, everybody got to deal with something. What you expect, a perfect man, a perfect man doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes people don't know that it may not be your mother saying it. It might be your grandmother, your aunt, you know, whatever that some people are taught and trained to put up with it. Mm. And, then, and, and and that if, if they don't, you're being too picky. Right. You don't know a good man right. when you see one. Right. He goes to work. Well, he, he went to work sometimes. You, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever you know, he wanted to, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah. and he's not bad to you all the time. He buys you. I mean, my grandmother told me one time, you know, I've been married, I think it was like 45, 50 years at that time. I've been married 50 years, never had my husband take me anywhere or buy me anything. Your husband buys you stuff. He takes you out. What you complaining about for a girl? You guys, you, you, your generation just too spoiled. Mm. But what about the, the me's in the world that didn't have mom, mm. that didn't have dad, mm-hmm. that didn't have grandparents? Right. I'm the oldest. Ten year difference. When my mom passed away, I was 11. They were toddlers. So, who was there to tell me to go to court? Mm -hmm. Who was there to tell me to call the police? Right. Who was there to tell me that I was valuable enough to fight for? I... I, I knew no worth. I didn't even know what worth was. Because if my mom didn't stay around long enough and love me. So you stayed. I wasn't alone. He gave me company. But then it came to the point where, you know, do I want to take another beating or uh, just go get a tattoo? Mm-hmm. Some things are easier. But there are some people, and that's the, that's the connection between um, Anissi and I. Mm. She has amazing parents, mm. and I didn't. And it's to show you that you can come from anywhere and end up at the same restaurant. Right. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And it was just feeding my appetite. And eventually, it came to the point where I was tired of changing the locks. I was right. tired of going back. Mm-hmm. So one day, I just laid there. I said, God, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So he broke off the key in the door and didn't come back. It's very draining. It just sucks the life out of you. And not knowing who you are, it took me just until this point to know who Nisi is. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I liked to read. I didn't know, you know, because I was controlled. I didn't know um, how to be a friend. I didn't have friends. That was cut off. You know, um, I couldn't, you know, be with my family members. Think, you know, just family members, really? No. So I had to learn who Nisi is. Love yourself. Because I didn't know. I was controlled, manipulated. So. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, when I left, you know, I had... Um, one of the police officers gave me a pamphlet with all these numbers. Mm-hmm. And one of them was the Houston Area Women's Center 
One of them was um, another place called uh, Family Time, which is an humble. And they helped me. They, uh, I went through the support group meetings at the Houston Area Women's Center. Mm-hmm. I went to free counseling yep. at mm-hmm. Family Time. It took, it, like I said, it took two years. It took two years to mm-hmm. rebuild my sense of self. Yes. And and I'm still going to work and raising kids and doing exactly. everything I got to do in in the middle yes. of going through all of this, mm-hmm. going to court, yes. all of this stuff, you know. <laughs> so life goes on, mm-hmm. but but you have to rebuild yourself from square one. Who am I? What do I believe? And that's a and hard how, thing. It is. To, it is so hard to do. And and but the thing is, when you have help, you know, and and I, one of the people say, why do you do what you do? Why am I doing this podcast? Why do I have shows? Because people need hope. Mm-hmm. Yes. People need right. an outlet. People right. need something to make them smile, mm-hmm. to make them feel and good. And know that they're not alone in yeah. this. There's other people that have gone through this. We're all a community. We're all a family. We can all go on this journey of rebuilding ourselves together. Because if I got out, they can get out. Right. And if I, and, and see, and I don't. When people look at me and they say, oh, you know, you've been teaching 25 years, you have national awards, you've been published 13, 14 times, you've, you know, you have this show, you got merchandise, you got this, that, and the other. You must have always had it easy. No. no I didn't no. get here because I had it easy. Right, I right. got here because I decided to mm-hmm. change my life. And right. I, I, I used those resources that were given to me and I'm very grateful for those resources right. you know and I want people to know that those resources are there and I want to be a resource you know right. one thing that I quote all the time I think my Angelou said it when you learn teach yes mm-hmm. you know when you yes. rise go back for somebody that's right. back there it forward. Yes. don't no, leave yeah. them there exactly. because what if somebody had left me there mm. I probably would have killed myself right. by now I'm, I'm yes. I, you know Mm-hmm. But I didn't have to do that because somebody handed me a pamphlet right. and said, go here. Mm-hmm. Yes. You may not know what to do next. Don't Let's worry about it. Don't there. think about it. Go Just here. Start there. Right. Start right here. Right. It's step and one. And then it'll start unfolding. Once right. you get to the back and everything, it'll unfold. That's where they had everything. They were like, okay, well, we can do this, 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 this. Okay. Well, I'm here. And even if you don't know who you are. Mm. Even if you don't have a place to start, Mm -hmm. I'll be 52 next year. And I just got it two years ago that my past, what my mom did, what my grandmother did, those were things for them. Mm -hmm. I had to find out and decipher what was for Stephanie. Because before that could be fire. The little girl in me had to be healed. Right. Yeah. Right. So not only are we dealing with the abuse as adult women, but a lot of us have little girls in us that are hurting. Oh, yeah. And we don't understand that at the age that that little girl got hurt is when we mentally stopped growing. Mm -hmm. you stopped growing so how can you be aware how can you be aligned Mm -hmm. you're aligned with that seven year old's mind right that 11 year old's mind Mm -hmm. but you're in a 40 year old body right or a 35 year old body Mm -hmm. or she had to (laughs) yes she had to point that out to me because i had to sit back and think what happened why did i have three unveiled marriages why was I unhappy? Why didn't I have good communication skills? Why was I always running? Seven-year-old sexual abuse. Stop growing. What do you do when you're a child? You run. You run everywhere. You run from everything. I had to learn that. Yeah. And it's always awesome to have a, a person with you that helps you be a better person. That's why... I love how we have that sisterhood, that empowerment for other women. We want that for other women. They are not alone. You are not alone. No. I agree. And, you know, when I went to counseling, they gave me so many books. I remember one of them, and this 
might not have been where the technique was, but one of them was called the courage to heal. So I'm throwing that out there. But <laughs> there was a technique that they uh, they recommended in this book because I used to have flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to have really bad flashbacks mm-hmm. and I would forget where I was. Mm-hmm. And that's why I initially went into counseling because mm-hmm. my flashbacks were tremendously bad. And the book said, when you're in the flashback, change one thing. Change okay. one thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You know, so I would change one thing and make it something, when you're changing it, make it something that's making it less threatening. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so the next time I had the flashback, that one thing would be there and I would remember I changed that. I mm-hmm. I yes. control that. That redirecting. Yes. Right. And right. then, like, I would make him shrink. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he was small, like small enough where I could kick him right. you know, in my mind. Um, or I would pro- I would have somebody else intervene or I would be there as an adult saying, I'm here. I'm invisible. I can't help you, but you're not alone. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. And eventually when I would have those flashbacks, it wouldn't even be terrifying anymore. It wouldn't even be paralyzing anymore it right. would just be a journey it would just it would just be a memory yeah. mm-hmm. it was a calmer right. memory yes. okay I remember that mm-hmm. and I remember that that's over mm-hmm. and I got past it mm-hmm. and I'm okay now right. and it was to that point and and so it was just changing one little thing at a time one little thing at a time and that was very helpful for me to realize that I don't have to relive this thing the way it happened right. and let it abuse me 24 mm-hmm. 7 Mentally. for the oh, rest yes. of my life yes i can actually <laughs> yeah i can actually yeah. change it and you know mm-hmm. after i started doing that i think it took maybe a couple of months i stopped having the flashbacks all together okay. and they went away so that was very powerful for me you know that's what? your imagination is a power thing powerful thing it people is. don't understand that that's ptsd mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah they don't trauma. It's because it's trauma, mm-hmm. and the mind is powerful. Your thoughts are your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Did you hear me? Your <laughs> thoughts mm-hmm. are your thoughts, and in your subconscious mind, you may have some tricks up your sleeve that mm-hmm. that you now didn't have any idea right. then, because right. we I learned through counseling and. I would suggest to anyone who has been through any type of trauma to go to, through a dialectical behavioral therapy course. It's called DBT. Mm-hmm. It equips you with the tools that you did not learn or was stripped from you due to that trauma. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so many things like acronyms like Dear Man. But those are things that you say and you do to keep validating yourself and give yourself worth and say what you want from the person, but tell them, mm-hmm. mm, this is what I want, but I'm going to maintain my self-respect. I mean, I just learned so much. So it was like, wow, these tools, I don't know. But one, one thing we don't do is you have to be transparent mm-hmm. to stay aligned. Yes. You Very cannot so. mm-hmm. give a crap what anybody else says about your story. Mm. But once you share it with other people, mm-hmm. you set them free. Right. Mm. Because they know and they find out it wasn't just me. Right. I didn't have mom. And when grandma did step in, she was like, you're a burden. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if I'm a burden to grandma, then I guess I should stay with him because ain't nobody else going to want me. But people, Stephanie, oh, you're so beautiful. I don't know what you see, but I don't see that. Other people see it. But other people see mm-hmm. it. And it got to the point where eventually I, I did see it, but I wanted to. I wanted you to see the beauty on the inside. Mm-hmm. Hair can change, skin can change, but my insides, my mind and my soul are mine and God's, and that's how you stay aligned. I think that's so powerful. You know, being aligned is about those things that don't change. I remember I heard this motivational speaker. It might have been Joel Osteen or somebody. Somebody said it. 
they took a $50 bill in their hand and they asked the audience, who wants this $50 bill? And everybody's hand went up. And then they crumpled it and they stomped on it. And they said, now who still wants it? The same hands went up because even though they had crumpled it, stomped on it, made it all dirty, it was still the same value. The value didn't change. Uh, worth. The <laughs> worth exactly. was still there. Exactly. So even though people have crumpled you, mm -hmm. stepped Stomped on you, on, yes. you still have the same value. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I had to step aside from all the roles. Sometimes we identify, I'm a teacher, I'm a daughter, I'm a granddaughter, I'm a mother, I'm whatever mm -hmm. those roles are. But the problem with that is what happens when I don't teach anymore? Mm -hmm. Do I lose my sense of self? No. What happens? Mm -hmm. Some people do, though. Yes, right. Do. Mm -hmm. You're right. I'm just saying. You know, yeah, well, yeah, you should. Right. I, when, when this was brought home to me so much over the last um, five years, because I had nine deaths in the last five years. Mm -hmm. First, my father died, and then my grandparents, my great-grandparents, my, my mother and father-in-law, both of them, I had two sets. And then my mother died, and there was nobody above me. It was me at the top. I don't have parents. I don't have grandparents. I don't have great-grandparents. I don't have a mother and father-in-law. I'm not somebody's daughter anymore or granddaughter that's here i know my ancestors still exist mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. but physically i am no longer a daughter and i for a minute let me put it like this for about a month <laughs> mm -hmm. i lost my sense of self who am i when i'm not their child their you know who and and th that may sound crazy to people but losing everybody above you and you got you feel like you have nobody to go to mm. for some wisdom. Come on. Nobody to go to for some, for you have, you have no support system. And when my mother died last year, I was like, I don't know how, how do I parent my kids? How do I deal with my grandson? How do I, you know, when things would be hard, too hard for me to deal with. And that's hard because I can yes. deal with a lot. Yes. I would go to my mother. I would go to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. They would tell me something mm -hmm. that would help. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that anymore. And I had, it had never, I know everybody should think about this probably, that you're going to lose those people. And I knew it in the back of my head. I knew right. it. And I knew when my mom was sick and she was dying, I knew she was dying. I just never considered how it would change my whole view of the world and how it would change my view of who I was. And I, I, I never thought that I would lose, in a sense, myself. And I didn't know who I was. And, and it took, for me, that's when I decided that I was going to get initiated because I was like, I need my culture. Right, yeah. I need my culture. It's much stronger than I ever had it before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I was raised in the suburbs around a lot of white people and, and I didn't have as much of a right. cultural background as I wanted to have. Right. Um, and I really had to go deep and, and, and learn a lot about, you know, my African culture and learn about the whole initiation process. And that was how I found myself again because mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was lost. <laughs> I didn't know where to go. So... I think that everybody has, you have to find those things that anchor you, whether it's your faith, mm -hmm. but it's got to be something that's not going to change because people die. Yes. Jobs get lost. Mm -hmm. Children move out. Mm -hmm. You yes. know what I'm saying? It can't be, well, I'm a great mother because eventually you're going to have to mother in a different way. Right. They're not going to be right up under you, mm -hmm. no. you know? Or I'm a great, great wife. Well, what happens if you get divorced? If that's your whole identity, mm. you're going to be lost. Right. Yes. You know, so it has to be something that comes from inside that nothing can take away from you. You know, yes. that no one can take away from you. And that's what I had to find for myself. And I thought I had it. I thought I had it till my mother died. 
And I realized I don't have it like I thought I had it. Mm -hmm. And then, once again, those young ladies who never had mom. Right. Mm -hmm. My sister will be 41, October 1st. She was two. She's never known my mother. Looks just like her. Mm -hmm. But she's never known her. But not knowing her hurt her just as much. So when you don't have that family to go to, the one thing I can say that's amazing is God has sent me family mm. from other families. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this is my sister. Mm -hmm. It's not just a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. This is my sister. This is my accountability partner. Oh, yeah. You know, it was times I did not want to do the podcast. I was either in pain, I didn't feel like it, but I'd given her my word. So you can start, I am living proof that you can start with nothing. Right. But you gain a whole lot. But you, you gain, <laughs> yep. you gain things. Because I've been out of line for over 40 years. But... I didn't even know what aligned looked like or felt like. I didn't know what love was. What did it look like? What did it feel like? What was I supposed to do? But when, you, when I learned to be still and I found that quiet voice mm -hmm. in the middle of meditation, and like you said, I learned my history. I learned what my ancestors would do. I learned why I loved to praise dance, what it meant. I know, I loved why I loved amethyst. Amethyst is never gonna change, it's there, it's meant for this, and it's been that, and you're right. I had to find out that no matter what I had already been through, that I had always been enough. Right. Mm, that's powerful. Yes. No matter what or where I had been, I had always mm -hmm. been enough. And no matter what, we will always be mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, that's, that's true. And so I whisper in my grandchildren's ear, I have seven grandsons and one granddaughter, and I whisper in their ears, but her especially, I hold her hands in mine, and I look her, and I say, Alea, you are enough. Mm -hmm. You have always been enough. And you will always be enough. You have to do that with children these, you know, right now, because we're breaking generational curses. Yes, we have to speak life. We have to. Especially single moms. I have a boy and a girl. I let my son know, you are a king. I let my daughter know, you are a queen. You're beautiful. You are enough. You've always been enough. You have to speak those um what were you saying? Affirmation. Those words of affirmation. <laughs> Those words of affirmation. But we don't. We. How can you? You say find something that's tangible mm -hmm. that you can anchor yourself to. Mm -hmm. But in our generation and our 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 culture, so many of our things have been stripped. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Our our men have been broken down in front of us to tell us that they're not strong. Mm -hmm. But why are you scared of them? Mm -hmm. Because they are the beginning. Mm -hmm. We are the mother of beginnings. Right, right. But you have to know that. Mm -hmm. And that in itself was enough for me to pick up, dust myself off, and start doing plays, yes. start being a motivational speaker, yes. mm -hmm. being a brand ambassador, mm -hmm. modeling, mm -hmm. never yeah. letting go because I am enough. And I am God's child. Once you realize that, you walk a different walk. I get a I different agree. walk and you do yes. a single step. <laughs> and yeah. Well, you know, for me, nature has been a salvation. Because mm. it's always here. Mm -hmm. But we don't always pay attention to no, it. You need to stay grounded. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. It, but walking, just walk outside, look up at the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, walk outside, look up at the sun, feel the wind on your face. Go meditate in the dust and dirt. Put a little blanket out yes. there. Sit on the ground yes. and feel the ground, the ground beneath you. Yes. Feel, you know, 
I remember there was this movie. Oh, I cannot remember the name of it right now. Um, but there's a woman in the movie, and and her grandson's walking with her through the forest. And he goes, does the earth speak? And she says, yes. The earth has a voice. Yes. Listen to it whisper to you. Listen to the, the, the earth. You know, listen to the trees as you're walking by them, you know. I mean, if you don't feel loved and you're walking in nature, you're missing out. You need to feel the love, you know, the, the ground beneath your feet, yeah. the wind on your face, yes. the, 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 the breeze going through the trees and just realize, you know, there was an author that said, God could have made this all black and white. We wouldn't have known the difference. Mm. No. But he didn't. No. Mm -hmm. She didn't. No. Mm -hmm. She didn't. And she was very detailed. Yes. Exactly. I mean, think about all of the beauty, all of the intricacies yes. inside of nature. And then if you don't, you know, the Bible says about the sparrow, a sparrow yes. doesn't fall to the ground, except our father knows mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. You know, but the point is everything in nature is so beautiful, so perfect we are too. Yes. We were created bus. with a design, yes. a purpose. And, and, you know, when I look at nature, I look at a spider web. You ever looked at a spider web? Very interesting. It's, it's, it's nasty, <laughs> but it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Especially when you got the water droplets uh -huh. on it and Very. it's just kind of mm -hmm. almost like a diamond shine. Mm -hmm. And you look at that and be like, that's like a, a artwork, a piece of artwork, you know, or a sunrise or a sunset. Mm -hmm. oh, and wow. just... Be anchored in the fact that there is beauty all around you. And if that is so beautiful, how beautiful am I? That doesn't even have a soul. Yes. Right. I have a soul. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to live forever. That flower is going to die. <laughs> right. It's beautiful. Right. It's going to die, gone. but mm -hmm. I will never gonna die. die. Mm -hmm. I will always exist. Mm -hmm. And when you start to realize who you really are, and it's not... How much money is in your bank account? It's no. not what kind of clothes you wear, what purse you have, what car you drive, how many degrees you have. No. It's none of that, but it's that inner person that was created, you know, with a purpose. Yeah. And, and when you start to align yourself with that and say, okay, I am a gift. Come on. Speak. I am a gift. Yes. Speak life. I am a gift to this world. Mm -hmm. I was put I here am. to mm -hmm. give. Yes. What is inside of me, mm -hmm. whether that is teaching somebody how to do math or teaching somebody how to bake a cake right. or giving them a poem mm -hmm. or painting something mm -hmm. or lifting your friend up when they're down mm -hmm. with some positive advice, you right. know, whatever. I was a gift. I was put here to give something that no. nobody else can give. Mm -hmm. No. This world was created with me in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. This world was created and this was going to take place. Even before we took place. Yeah. And that's the, the beauty in it. Is you can find beauty in, in, in anything. Like people ask me, why did you choose fire? Fire can give you life, but fire can also give you death. Sometimes there are some things in me that have been in me so long that they need to die. So that I can rise higher. Because they've been weighing me down. Mm -hmm. that's why I couldn't stay aligned sometimes you can't stay aligned because you're carrying too much a car was meant to carry only so much Right. but if you got it and we saw a budget truck on the way here that budget <laughs> truck was leaning. leaning I mean I mean <laughs> leaning and it wasn't even meant to lean okay mm -hmm. it, no. was, it didn't have no switches and nothing <laughs> just, it was just leaning <laughs> I mean just oh I was like whoever packed this really packed all the heavy stuff on this side so and I know he wanted to go faster but he couldn't he couldn't mm, po, po. he just couldn't he was just sitting there like let me just take this here truck and go on and be out of line yeah but Things we got to when you let go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, when I learned to be grounded, we used to, when I was, we were little, we used to play outside, barefoot, run. Mm -hmm. But we were aligned. You know, the Indians and Af in our, our culture, when we dance, we're barefoot. Right. Oh, we have mm -hmm. on slides yeah. so we can easily slide them off. 
Because that that energizes you. That heals you. So at, at night, I have these, these grounding mats that I put into the wall, and I sleep with my feet on them. Because I, I live in an apartment, and everybody and their dogs been out there, so I don't know where, you know, where it was been, but <laughs> I want to stay grounded, and I know what it does to me. Mm. But I... What we're doing is sharing, sharing our stories, sharing the knowledge that we have. And black women, we have to do that. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, once we heal, watch the world heal. Right. I agree. Well, we're going to kind of come to a close. You know, I wanted you guys to tell, like, where can they find you? What are some of the things that are on your agenda that are coming up? You know, what what do you have to offer this audience? Um Audience, if you look here, I have merch, you know, for the people that are um, on the podcast. You know, my name is Zanashe, Z-E-N-A-S-E. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I do have merch at laughsandlyricsmerch.com. I have shirts and phone cases. And see, I got pillows. This is one of my pillows. I got bags, tote bags. I got all kinds of merch, you know. But... The merch is about making you feel good. Mm -hmm. The merch is about reminding you of who you are. The merch is about reminding you of your purpose. I believe you should put things on your body. You should put things in your home that have a purpose Mm -hmm. and that keep you aligned and remind you of what you're here for and what you are about. Mm -hmm. And so when people see you and they say, man, what, what is that? What does that mean? Or... Or maybe they don't even have to ask because it speaks so loudly. Right. It just speaks for mm-hmm. itself. You know, but you're putting that positive message out into the world. And and I wanted to create um, a merchandise line that does that, that always has a positive message. You feel good putting it on. It reminds you of who you are. It reminds you of why you're here. It reminds you that you are more mm-hmm. than like I said, your bank account, your degrees, right. those other little things. So I wanted them to tell a little bit about themselves, their journey, their where they're headed, and how to find them and all that. Yes. So um, we do have a podcast called She's Misunderstood. And there's two seasons, season one and season two. And you can find those on Anchor, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Um, also, I am on um, Facebook. Uh, under She's Misunderstood, Nisi Perkins. Also, I am on Instagram, She's Misunderstood.20. And I just released um, a book September 12th called She's Misunderstood, My Story. And it is on Amazon um, currently right now. And it's um, paperback and an ebook. But basically, um, my purpose in life is to empower young women starting at the age of where I stopped growing which was seven due to sexual abuse on up Um, we have a podcast coming up that is in the works called becoming a masterpiece so we're we're just excited i'm gonna speak for myself i am excited about it because it gets it gives me chills to empower other women to know that again they are enough you you have worth that nobody can discount they can't put it on rollback no blue light special do not water your you can't even haggle this worth (laughs) you know so you know you are worthy of being you so um, I'm just excited. We got a lot going on. Yes. 2021, they ain't going to be able no, to stop with No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> My name is Stephanie Nias, a.k.a. Fire, with three eyes. And and I say it because I'm just that hot. H for humble. Mm-hmm. O for open. And T for transparent. Yes. Like she said, um, I currently have an album that I released the end of March. Mm-hmm. It's called Burnt Love Letters to Myself. It's on all platforms. I'm currently putting the final touches on my book. Mm-hmm. Um, just 
life lessons that I want to share with other people. I'm, I've been modeling. I'm the brand ambassador for Envious Fashions and Boutique. Mm-hmm. You can find that also Facebook, Instagram. Just go to Envious Fashions. You'll see a picture of me. Um, Miss Pat Moore is the owner, and it's an honor and a privilege to be wearing and be the face of a black-owned right. mm-hmm. company. And she makes a difference because she pours into me. Becoming a masterpiece is going to be so profound because it is our baby. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's time to heal some souls. Mm -hmm. It's time to heal some souls. When your soul heals, you will find out how phenomenal you are. And there will be no limits. There will only be heights Mm -hmm. of the unknown that are magical. You will learn everything that you did not learn. You will start to love yourself so much that the anchors and the curses and the things that we've been going through as a unified group, those things will fall off. Mm Mm. And then we will be able to do what you said, be aligned. We'll be able to laugh. You'll know what your gift is. You'll know your worth. So we do, starting with the little girls mm-hmm. and moving on up. We're gonna, eventually we're going to have web, webinars, conferences. Yearly we're going to travel and put on a conference in a different place. Mm-hmm. And... It's time to heal some souls. It's time to let you know that you are a masterpiece. And a masterpiece can be a person. Mm -hmm. As long as it was created by someone who is mastery. Mm. And I believe that the Most High is the greatest master that there can be. So I thank him for letting me know that I am a masterpiece and so are you. Awesome. Well... I want to thank you guys for joining us. We are on a journey. Mm -hmm. And you can come back and follow us on that journey. You can follow them on Facebook, on Instagram. You can follow them through buying their merch. I forgot that. I am Stephanie Nias on Facebook. (laughs) I'm also Fire, F, three eyes, R-E on on Facebook. I am am Fire on Instagram Mm -hmm. and three underscore crosses Mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, were we still going to listen? Do we have time or no? We're... Sure, sure. Um, she has, as she already told you, a whole album out. And so um, the people who are listening on, on Facebook Live won't be able to hear it, but the people on the podcast will be able to hear it. So if you want to, you know, go to, tell them where to find you if they want to go listen to us if they can't hear it right now. I'm on Apple. I, I, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, every streaming platform you can find it. It's called Burnt Love Letters to Myself. These are actually letters that I wrote from the age of 10 to the age of 51 that are significant points in my life. I wrote these letters to that little girl and that grown woman. And then after I did it, I literally set them on fire. No need to discuss it. It's done. I gotcha. I gotcha. So this piece is dreams to come true. Burn love letters to my love letters to me. Dreams do come true. I forgive myself for buying into the illusion that I was ever lacking anything. It was an illusion. March 13th, 2020, on a Friday, the 13th. Good luck for me, but this project is finally complete. I never saw it coming, I didn't see this. Evidently someone else saw it for me. I remember a little over a month ago, I called Legacy City. Can we meet? Set up a meeting. I wanted to write a book. Well, before we get started, you know I gotta I ask. said, okay, you have your DBA and LLC. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are those? You're speaking a foreign language to me. Don't worry, I got it.
are a few instructions to get you started in so listen to developing and walking in your dream. Yeah, he asked me, but what do you need from me? These love letters to myself. I want to tell the story with my voice. You can add the music, the beats, to give each letter healing strength okay. and a distinct heartbeat of its well, very own. Let's do something like a monologue. Now, Last year something I recorded, it's time to set some hurt souls free. Because music soothes us. I now see why I had to endure the hurt, pain, and shame. And of your master scheme to allow you my dream the message to come true. I remember sitting down with you before I was born. You gave me my assignment, told me I was willing to do great things and still go through some pain. For the longest, I believed I was living in a nightmare. But a nightmare is still a dream. Ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given. See, and you will find. See, not, and you will find. And it will be open. Not, and it will be Dreams do open. come true. It was open. Don't give up. Just believe. Just believe. When I least expected it. Least expected it. I woke up from a nightmare. And I was in the pool. And started to have a daydream. I started walking the journey of my daydream. Watching and unfolding. Come to life. Not only healing me, but healing others too. Healing others. Through too. this project, this I project. cried tears. I had to lay down for days like to recover days. after recording a beat. Because it wounds I had to so open so I could clean out the voice and heal. So I could fly free. Dreams do come true. Do with bipolar anxiety and PTSD. Take my two holidays. One day. Six months with three major. These letters I've written months. to myself as a way of coping, healing, self-soothing, discovering peace. I've come to life. My voice is way, my voice, is my voice, is free. my voice. Because when you told me that my mom was going to be the death of me, you were right all along. But early in life, my voice destroyed me. My voice now me. I have victory. My now voice is my same life. Set them on fire. Ashes to ashes. Dust, dust, to, dust. to dust. Dreams to do come true. Dreams do come true. That was truly fire. If you guys on the Facebook Live would have heard what we heard you would be just vibing i mean you gotta get that you gotta get yes. that so we talked about alignment we talked about awareness we talked about our journey to getting aligned mm -hmm. and this design right here this I is actually <laughs> a physical representation yes. of alignment because yes. get zen mm -hmm. In your brain. You mm -hmm. got to get zinned up here. You got to get your mind right. You got to get your attitude right. And then you got to stay zen. You got to, in your heart, find those rituals that keep you grounded, keep you on track, keep you in your intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start to veer off, you can pull yourself mm -hmm. back because you got those rituals, you have those patterns. And then you spread zen. Like she was saying, it's time to heal some souls. Yes. But you got to be anchored in something. And you see she's sitting anchored yes. in Africa. Africa. Yes. She's anchored yes. in where the motherland, yes. where we all came from. Right. The, the, this is the basis of civilization. Mm -hmm. Everything started here. Mm -hmm. Everything. So she's sitting and grounded and 
completely, you can see she's become one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. With where she came from. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's not denying it anymore. She's embraced where she came from. And this, this Africa is symbolic of just that whole history, your personal history, but also that ancestral history. You know, in our veins, they say there's at least 1,052 ancestors. Mm, that power beautiful. is in us. Yes. And so this gets in, stays in, spreads in. This is my mantra. This is my life. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe in. That's alignment right there. Yeah. Yes. You know, stay aligned. Find those things that keep you aligned. Find those things that keep you rooted and grounded in who you are and what you want to accomplish because it's not for you. Mm -hmm. None of us was put here just for us. We were put no. here to spread something. I say I'm here to spread Zen. Yeah. I'm here to spread peace. Yes. Contentment, wholeness. Yes. That's what that's about. So that's what this is about. Zenergy. So get Zen, stay Zen, spread Zen. Yeah. May you walk in Zenergy. Thank you guys for joining us. Follow us, buy our merch. Wait for this to come out on YouTube and Facebook. Well, Facebook Live is there now. But YouTube and <laughs> And all the podcast streaming platforms, yeah, and then share it, share it, share it. And you can share this video now, you know, so that your friends can get the experience that you had and they can be whole and we can all grow together. So may you walk in energy. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. <laughs>